Okay. Yeah. Hi everyone. Let's welcome back to the last half of our uh, day two event. So I think uh, the next session is going to be on soft skills that make a great software developer. So I think this is something which is really generic and uh, it's kind of irrespective of your te technical track. We'll all be interested to hear. And I'm really happy to welcome Wilson Anandraj, who is with me, who is joining as a speaker for the day. So he's a vice president at uh, Software Services Factory, in, and he's currently working at uh, Infinite Computer Solutions. And uh, there's a lot more to talk about him. He has around 22 years of experience in R&D, and uh, which includes global delivery, pre-sales, solution architecture, IMS delivery, India leader at Alcatel Lucent India. And he's also head in India IPTC in Alcatel Lucent. And uh, he is expert, his expertise is in uh, operations management and transformation. And uh, he has a success, he has been successful in creating offshore teams and leading people. And he's proficient in resource management, analytical skills, mentoring skills, presentation, whatnot, uh, learning, leadership, and budgeting and interpersonal skills. So I'm really happy to welcome you, Wilson. So the stage is all yours. We are excited to hear you. Thank you, Pavitra. Uh, good afternoon, friends. I'm, I'm really, really happy to be part of this event. And it gives me an immense pleasure uh, to be here to talk to you about some of my experiences, some of the learnings that I have got in the software industry. And I know this is a Saturday and it, it's around the two o'clock. Uh, people are wanting to go for lunch. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go through the slides I allow you to ask questions whenever it is possible, uh, either through Slack or through Pavitra. Um, and uh, we'll interact as much as possible, even after the session. Okay. The reason why I chose this topic is, guys, um, I had been very, very passionate about training people, mentoring people. Um, I, have, I have brought in lots and lots of good, passionate software developers. And I know this industry ever since in 1992 when I took my first GW basic class where I started writing code when my mentor said computers are all about idiot box you know, and they don't do anything other than what you tell them to do. And from that time onwards, this has been a passionate industry. And what India is today is because of there, ha there has been millions of uh, software developers who have gone around the world. Um, have proved that India is the best place for software development. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll quickly go through this agenda. I'll tell you what is software development all about, which probably you all know, and the way soft skill fits into that, uh, and the importance of it, and what are the few important soft skills that you and I as a software development community should have, and then we'll finish it with a QA. Okay. Let, let me start with a very, very generic software engineering uh, kind of a definition. Okay. Guys, I tell you, this is, this is taken from Carnegie Mellon University, where they say software engineering is a branch of computer science that creates practical, cost-effective solutions to computing and information processing problems, preferably by applying scientific knowledge, developing software systems, in the in the service of mankind if, if i need to put it in a different way my own wilson's own definition of software industry software engineering i would call that as a art it's an art of making the silicon chips do what you want them to do for you right it, it's a communication between your brain and the and the silicon chips which have no animate life, which do not have any life in themselves, but they are programmed, they are controlled in such a way that there is a beautiful output that comes out of it, which is used for the service of mankind, right? Um, remember again, the words of my own mentor who said, computers do not do anything, anything. You know, you, know, you talk about ML, you talk about AI, you talk about orchestration, all these words today, but computers and networks, the systems do not do anything other than what you tell them to do. That is the power of software engineering. And that is the power of software developers. We have created this industry and this industry has seen a massive growth from 1990s, from 1980s onwards, ever since we 
uh, the first computer was invented from there and today what we see it is all the brain of the developers which has gone in it is all the skills of the developers which has gone in and computers are just boxes or silicon chips all right um in in, in all this what we have done is remember guys this is something that we need to remember we as superior human being have gone down below our intelligence we have gone way below our intelligence to talk to the computer to make it understand to make it work the call flow that we want that to work and then have been very very successful in making it work and that is the tremendous change that you are seeing in the world today computers are doing all that now we say and for which the computers which has got no intelligence we have made it intelligent not by bringing up the computers but we going below with our soft skills to make computer understand what we want them to do all right and if if that is the case what is that we miss in soft skill if we are able to talk to inanimate things and make a powerful industry out of these inanimate things what are we talking about lack of soft skills in, in software engineering right Let, let's go to the evolution of software engineering Guys, if you remember the Pressman book on the software development life cycle, software engineering, we had seen waterfall as a methodology for developing software. Remember in software development process in waterfall methodology, we used to talk to the customers, understand what they wanted to do and developed software. And it was a pretty successful model. There were lots of computer systems and computer applications which were created. Um, using waterfall model, there was absolutely no issue. We, we, we had seen multiple ways in which we talked to the customer, the Big Bang approach. Uh, there, were, uh, there were some uh, shortcomings in that. But important soft skills that we displayed in waterfall model includes uh, when the customer was not able to articulate what he wanted to bring up in the system, we used methods like observations, interviews, focus groups, all the soft skills that we used to understand what the customer wanted. And then you know, we built systems. And it was a pretty successful model. There were some features which were not used when we were building a big bang approach there were issues that were coming up and then we said hey let's let's improve our soft skills better let's talk to the customer better let's understand the requirements of the customer better then we moved on to agile again it is soft skills bringing in the customer into our premises are we going into the premises of the customer having an iterative way of development creating a prototype showing to the customer and saying hey customer is this what you like is there a change that you want we spoke we understood we we understood what he wanted what he had in mind it is all about soft skills right so waterfall agile was a natural evolution and you know there were there were lots of good things that started happening on agile we we created bigger agile safe agile you know there were bigger frameworks which were created for software development and then we still saw there are some more uh, soft skills that can be bring uh, brought in and what is that the requirements are collected from customers as software engineers we understood we had that uh, you know skills to understand develop the product there was a, a software but software connected the person who created the software engineer and the end customer and the end user of that and between these two people we wanted to have less of uh, less of gaps we wanted to bridge them more then it was a natural evolution on devops if you see all these three models and, and today we have devs uh, segops we have other methodologies that might come in but all that we are seeing today is the uh, methodology in which we started writing the software is based on the soft skills and then based on identification of gaps that we had with users and it is all human uh, uh, there are technologies i'm not talking about technologies and tools and frameworks which have been there but it is all bridging gaps in terms of our soft skills between the creators of the software which is software development community and the users of the software and that's what these evolutions have taught us now, now just one point about devops that you know that i liked i took this um, uh, definition again DevOps is a combination of software developers and operations. Look again, we are talking about not about frameworks. We are not talking about um, you know, the tools. We are talking about the combination of two people. There is a there is a middleware in between. We call that as a software, but it is the creators and the users. And it is defined as a software engineering methodology, which aims to integrate the work of software development and software operations team 
by facilitating a culture of collaboration. Right? Take a note of this word. Collaboration is the soft skill that we are talking about. Shared responsibility, accountability is what we are talking about. Methodologies might be different, but ultimately the creator of the, uh, creator of the software and the user of the software should have a kind of an understanding. There is um, when we talk about soft skills, you know, there are around um, uh, 65 soft skills that a person can have. If you have read a book called For Your Improvement, it talks about the skills that you need to have as a leader. There are 64 skills that they talk about. And one of them is collaboration. That's a soft skill which makes, makes you very successful in whatever you do. Accountability, responsibility, which tells you that what kind of maturity we have as a human being, right? So DevOps is all about collaboration of people. Collaboration is a soft, soft skill. Shared responsibility is a soft skill. Look at you know, what are the goals of DevOps. It says it represents a change in mindset. And of course, there are changes in frameworks. We have got better way of uh, storing uh, the repository. We have better way of integrating continuous integration. But all that is OK. But it has created a change in mindset. The change in mindset is it's a culture. That's a soft, that's a soft skill that I'm talking about. In building on top of the agile and lean practices, which have given a way to new frameworks and new, uh, new uh, tools, DevOps focuses on incremental development and rapid delivery of the software so that the end user can use it. The success relies on the ability to create a culture of accountability. Just take a note of this. If you want to be a great developer, if you want to be a world-class developer, if you want to be recognized as the best person in your company, in your industry, one thing that we need to cultivate is accountability, right? So success relies, success of DevOps itself relies on the person's accountability on how we are able to collaborate with a team. It's not one single person. We are not creating software for a person living in an island. Improved collaboration. Empathy. Empathy is, again, a soft skill. Empathy is, now it's not written anywhere. Empathy is understanding what the end user wants to do, and then creating a code, sitting with the computer, creating algorithms, creating this code in such a way that we understand the ultimate goal of using that software, empathy and joint responsibility for business outcomes. So that is the definition. It tells you how important it is for us to have soft skills of accountability, of collaboration, of empathy. We might be a fantastic coder. We might be a fantastic person in, in terms of our Python skills, our Java skills. But unless we understand the reason why customer has come to us, why the customer has paid us to create that code, we wouldn't be able to be a good software developer. Right? So therefore, the reason why software uh, soft skills are important for a software developer like us is when people work together on a software project, other skills are necessary to implement. Of course, there are. Uh, techniques and tools and frameworks that we need to uh, use. But apart from that, our ability to understand people, our ability to communicate what we have in our brain, our ability to interact with the team. Each person has got an ego. Everybody in, in this world who is born uh, has got an ego. That's, that's what Sigmund Freud tells us, right? So uh, interacting, communicating with multiple egos, with multiple uh, other team members, other stakeholders of the project, be it customer, end user, or be it vendors, or be it you know, uh, the policy makers. Ability to manage time, ability to prioritize what we want to present, and ability to report, presenting the progress of the project. Not the Big Bang approach, not doing everything that we can do, but not communicating, presenting the progress of the project. Negotiating with the customers in terms of what feature needs to go on priority. What feature can be held? What are what are the things that we can we can you know, uh, improve in in the product? So this is negotiating skills with the customers, solving problems for which you know we are we are paid and you know, we are respected in this world as problem solver. Every software developer is a problem solver. Every customer comes to you with a problem statement, and what we do is we create pro we create programs to solve problems, making decisions. Decision making is an important skill, among others. 
So that is that is the importance of soft skills. So guys, there are, as I told you, there are 64 um, uh, skills that you need to have as a software developer, as a software engineer. And you know, there is a big list of um, probably the soft skills are getting increased these days because of the technology that we are working on and so on. But uh, allow me to talk about few skills that I had seen as most important for software development community today. Number one, to survive in the industry. Number two, to excel in the industry. Number three, to be the best in the industry. And these are these are the important skills that I talk about. Number one, our ability to pay attention. That's soft skill that we need to uh, that we need to uh, inculcate. Number two, our ability to speak and transfer the message that we have in our brain to another person. Communication. Number three ability to live this life within 24 hours a day. We have only 24 hours a day. And how do we live our life? We have family. We have our own personal priorities. All that we do is we work so that we can have a good life. And if you know, if we die working, uh, it, it really doesn't work. How do we manage time? Management of time and organization of activities. Collaboration getting that um, mindset of collaboration, teamwork, adaptability, self-learning, and accountability. These are, these are some of the important skills uh, that, that I prioritize for software developers, right? So let's, let's move on to um, paying attention. Guys, in this era where we have millennials coming in, there are researches happening on how long a person can pay attention to anything the span of attention itself is shrinking. But as software developers, we need to remember that we are creators. We are creators of programs. We are creators of solutions. So therefore, to be on top of this profession, we need to pay attention to details. Just take a note of this. Paying attention to details will put you on, on the right track to your growth. We need to pay attention to problems. There is lots of times that we assume certain things, right? Assumption has become a big problem these days. It has become a big challenge while training people, while, while coaching people. Paying attention to details, maybe it is in the customer problem, to problems that we are, we are approached with, paying attention to solutions and seeing where the solutions can break, where the solutions need to be integrated with other solutions, paying attention to the solution that we build, Paying attention to risks that we have not seen but might approach us at any point of time. A risk is an event that can happen at any point of time. Paying attention to risk, paying attention to vulnerabilities. These are details you know, that we need to pay attention to. Pay attention to your customers. This is to people. People have got emotions. People have got body language. People have got tones. We need to pay attention to what customers want. We need to pay attention to how our peers feel. We need to pay attention to what our supervisors in the organizations are looking for from this project. And we need to look um, deeply into the uh, weak links in our team and, and how do we support them, right? So pay attention to customers, peers, um, people within the organization. Pay attention to where the team can break the weak links in the, in the team. Pay attention to the environment. We all work in a political environment. The environment, environment in which the project is executed, if you see the PMBOK, the project management body of language, uh, knowledge, it talks about environment consists of multiple things, external environment, internal environments, and political environments. We need to pay attention to that. Look at the changes. Look at the changes that, that might happen in the project. Look at the political surroundings. Look at the technical factors. Pay attention to the environment. And Pay attention to, this is my favorite statement that I tell in all my team meetings, pay attention to what is not spoken. That is the ultimate soft skill that one can develop. Somebody might come and say, yes, I will do this. But that yes may not be yes. If you have looked at the language, if you have looked at the tone, probably he's saying he's not interested, but he's being compelled, right? Yes can be interpreted into a different way. So therefore, as developers, as we are growing in our career you know, in, in software industry, what we need to inculcate, what we need to adapt is to listen to words which are not spoken. 
to read uh, lines which are not written i i always keep saying that when you get a mail anybody can read english in that mail my own daughter who is in third standard can understand the english of that but the difference between her and i is i understand the meaning behind the email the intention of sending that email when you are talk observe body languages observe the tones when you start paying attention to details to people to environment and you know, start focusing on what is not said what is not written then we become the superior software developers that the world is looking for and this will automatically push our career ahead um, ahead of others who may not understand the importance of paying attention paying attention is one of the great skills that software development community needs to have guys communication is another soft skill very very important for some reason um, i believe that instead of increasing our maturity in in communication because of the hurry the urgency in which we are living because of the busy world that we are living communication has deteriorated uh, remember today all of us whoever is working from india today on some software projects is not because of your credit it's not because of our, our credit in 1980s when the software engineering branch started opening up in the world indians around the world went to us went to europe started telling started proving that india has got the best of brains and that's how indian industry today indian software industry has grown and lots of credit to people who have done this in 1980s 1990 right and they were able to communicate and today what what we think is we have selective listening you know we don't listen to the entire statement we don't listen to the core message uh, we are all interested people have misunderstood communication as speaking english people have misunderstood communication as uh, in, a, in a in a group meeting group discussion you need to be to be vociferous you need to be loud so that people think that you are communicating communicating us not that communicating us um, is ability to put what you have in your brain to the other person that's what communication is all about so uh, animals communicate babies communicate without language uh, you know uh, it doesn't need uh, words for communicating but when we are when we are in this industry where the vocabulary is big the grammar is big we need to speak with clarity understand we need to own what we are speaking speak with conviction speak with confidence people will trust you only when you appear trustworthy Right. Keep yourself composed. Be polite. Um, respect the other person. Listening is equally important as part as part of your communication. Remember that communication includes non-verbal. Only seven percent of communications happens over words, and there are uh, body languages and tones which you need to pay attention to. Communication will take our career much faster uh, in our growth lane. understand time management guys when you have lot to do knowing how to manage your time is very crucial you need to have the perfection versus what is required for uh, for delivery right sometimes we, we we tend to spend lots of time trying to perfect what we are trying to deliver and then we we miss our timelines as well so how much time do you spend in planning how much time do you spend in actually writing the code how much time do you spend working with your team to come up with new ideas managing your own time efficiently allows you to focus on what is most important and get the task done some of the time wasters right you know if you had seen there are there are events that will waste your time and that's what we need to pay attention to the spam news the spam um, mails uh, some of the social media Uh, videos whatsapp groups that you get and you know, people forwarding some some hen and chicken playing together we we spend lots of time right uh, so paying attention to unneeded meetings unwanted the news spam mails uh, social medias that can give you lots of hour if you if you cut down one hour um, in in any of these activities probably you are getting a lot more into your life right um, manage your time manage the way in which you organize your work collaboration and teamwork very important as i said um, for those of you who have read um, the seven habits of highly effective people by stephen r covey he says synergy habit number 5 is synergy if you have read 13 principles of success by napoleon hill 
he talks about principle number two, which is mastermind. When you are by yourself, the amount of things that you can achieve is a lot lesser than when you have collaboration with somebody else. So whenever you get a chance to talk to your customer, take him as your collaborator. He is part of your team, a collaboration. When you're working with your team, collaborate with your team. It is not easy. No, it is not easy because as I told you, every human being have got their own understanding. They are seasoned with the experience that they have got. You might have difficult people to work with, but that's where our intelligence, our emotional intelligence should come in. And that's where we need to make conscious decisions. Uh, you know, uh, saying that everybody has got their own value system. I have open mind. I'll accept the other person as it is. I tell you guys, collaboration and teamwork, the best way to increase that is teach to somebody something on an everyday basis. Learn something by yourself. Go to the team, teach something, be it as small as a poem that you read from Shakespeare. Right? Go teach to them. When you teach to them, when you mentor them, when you become a go-giver, collaboration, the rest of the world, universe, rest of the people will start uh, reacting to you in a positive way. That's how we can handle teams. That's how we can get better collaboration with teams. Um, uh, kind of uh, last but one slide, adaptability and self-learning, a skill which is required, very soft skills. There are, uh, when I was in my in my uh, college days, I used to learn a program programming language called Prolog, you know, which was an artificial intelligence language. I used to learn COBOL. I used to learn Fox Pro. I used to learn VB 4.0. All this is dead. All this is not used anywhere, right? Given this nature of technological sector in which we are in, in the envious position that we hold in the industry, a developer with an adaptable and self-learning attitude has an edge. Today, I need to learn Kubernetes. I need to learn OpenShift. And that's a mandate of this technical sector. We have to learn as long as we work in this industry. The day you decide to stop learning is the day you, he you are heading for a path of absolence. You become absolute very, very quickly. Do not be afraid uh, of learning something. Do not be afraid of experimenting with some new technologies, new frameworks, new tools. Create code on a daily basis. Even if you have become a manager, even if you have become a director, put your hands dirty. Make your hands dirty by coding something. I, I know uh, my own manager called Adrian, who was uh, who was working with me in, a, in one of the earlier companies, he used to code. Uh, he was writing code for uh, augmented reality when augmented reality was not even in scenes. And today, augmented reality is everywhere, right? Being able to keep with times and work on upskilling one's, oneself to adapt to the current scenario is one of the best soft skills that we require in this specific industry. We are not driving MTC buses. For 40 years, the steering remains the same. For 40 years, the brake remains the same. Whereas here, the language has changed. The frameworks change, the tools change. And if I don't learn on a daily basis, I become obsolete. I'll be thrown out. And how do we increase our value? By, uh, by being with the, uh, with the right technology. Accountability, my last slide, guys. Uh, I know I'm, I'm running short of time. Accountability is what distinguishes a software developer uh, from a programmer. Take accountability. The code that I write is my own code. The code that I write is, is going to be used in an airplane. The code that I write is going to be used in an elevator. Do I want to get elevator struck? Do I want to have a mishap in any of my software? Take accountability. To grow as a software developer, you must accept and take ownership of your mistakes, of your learnings. Accountability is all about. First step towards our leadership in industry. I'm not talking about positional leadership. I'm talking about you as a software developer leadership. Uh, personal accountability is the first step. And as the saying goes, let's stop working today. Let's start enjoying our hobby. Hobby. Our hobby is to create code. Our hobby is to uh, solve problems. And therefore, I love what I'm doing. Therefore, I'm not tired of working. I'm, I'm not going to office to work. I'm going to office to play my hobby, which is writing of code and solving of problems. Let's take that accountability. And with that, guys, uh, I thank you very much for your presence. And over to you, Pavitra. Hey, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Wilson. I think it was a really great session. 
you have consolidated uh, so many things which uh, everybody, every one of us needs, right, like, from college students and professionals and everything. So I think uh, everybody would have really enjoyed and a lot of uh, key takeaways, I, I should say, and it's all uh, kind of uh, life lessons more than, you know, the technical stuff. So it is all life lessons and all of us should uh, definitely know and be by it. So it was really great uh, uh, having you on our event, uh, Wilson. So thank you so much. I think uh, people are so excited. I can see a lot of uh, no, this is coming up. So th thank you so much. Thanks for the session. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye.